quick checking. Can you see my screen there, um, my presentation? Yeah, that looks good. Okay. All right, I think we are good to go. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to our session on solving challenges in API testing to achieve more agile development. I am Shweta Sridharan, Senior Product Manager, with our architect, Dale Lane, will be presenting this session for you to actually help you excel in your tests, your API tests. Now, uh, we are at the center of a technological revolution that's changing or altering the way that we live and interact. Now, this digital transformation is happening at a pace that we have never experienced before. And its scale and volume of impact is monumental. Now, the emergence of new tech like IoT, autonomous vehicle, uh, AI, uh, blockchain, have done nothing but accelerate this digital transformation at exponential rates. And that is why the World Economic Forum has rightly termed this revolution as the fourth industrial um, revolution. We all know everyone is going digital, right? Like the landscape is changing, be it your customers, uh, your channel, or even your competitors. Now, enterprises are forced to focus on providing customer experiences you know, without having to wait for your customers to actually reach you. This digital transformation is truly industry agnostic. Uh, would you be surprised if I tell you that an automotive manufacturer has reimagined the riding experience? No, it's not Tesla. It's actually Harley Davidson. They have reimagined the riding experience for their riders or users, um, you know, through its electric um, motorcycle called the Livewire, where they've used cloud, IoT, and AI to provide connectivity, uh, new services, and insights in order to provide that personalized experience, the personalized touch that every customer is looking forward to. Now, you're not going to get any points by guessing what's been the driving force behind this digital transformation. I know we all know the answer. It's the APIs. Now, what's um, you know interesting to note is uh, just like the World Wide Web um, opened Internet's potential to billions of users around the world, API has unlocked uh, the potential for exchanging data in ways uh, you know, we have never done before. And what does it mean for the enterprises? It means developing new experiences, new business models, and innovations. Now, APIs are the central nervous system uh, that binds a core platform with its mobile app, website, and even the rest of the world. So as enterprises are expanding their digital footprint, they must ensure that the API behavior is in because it's going to have far reaching effect in terms of uh, you know how you model your apps experience and that's going to evaluate or that's going to lead into how your users are going to experience uh, your product an api however phenomenal can be rendered useless right if it's not dependable so now with many new integration solutions using APIs uh, to address their business needs, API testing and its challenges have taken the center stage. To be successful in this disruptive uh, climate, it is important for firms and enterprises to constantly update, to you know, stay ahead of their competitors. And I would say the world of software development is undergoing a huge uh, metamorphosis by adopting agile and continuous integration uh, you know, to keep up the pace of development. They want to uh, reach the market fast in order to win, retain, and serve their customers. 
But the problem that you see here is the development cycle is automated, but testing mostly remains manual uh, you know, during this, this cycle. And what this means is testing always plays a catch up uh, to the code drops or the development because it's happening at such a rapid pace uh, and testing being manual uh, cannot catch up most of the times and it becomes a huge bottleneck. So clearly a lot of us are struggling um, to balance uh, between moving at speed and quality. Now striking a balance, like I said, is, is definitely an issue. And how do we solve this is by introducing testing early in the development uh, life cycle, or what we call as the shift left strategy. And this is the only way a firm can be uh, customer obsessed or become customer obsessed. Let's talk about the real world scenario, right? Like uh, in reality, when we say, or when we talk about a modern app, it is typically powered by half a dozen APIs, uh, and that often includes third-party APIs as well. So to ensure the app is functioning properly, uh, your testing strategy has to be comprehensive. A simple ping to check if the API is uh, available is not going to suffice. You need a suite of testing um, capabilities that includes, but, not, but are not limited to, let's say unit testing, your functional testing, which is gonna help you validate your API's behavior, integration testing uh, to check the end-to-end -end flow uh, of the app, and security testing. Now, introducing testing early in the development lifecycle is gonna help you tremendously in, in, uh, in developing APIs that are of high quality. In development environment, right, your developer commits the code numerous times as part of the iterative uh, API development. Now, to test this API, a ping, like I said, would, would not be sufficient. They would have to create test cases to validate the API's behavior. Now, manually updating this test case every time a developer makes a change to the code sounds tedious and it's going to be a huge bottleneck so what the testing team here needs is an ability to generate test cases automatically based on uh, the api contract or the data on um, wire and this would help them to test continuously as uh, the developer makes code changes now, think about this. In addition to automatically uh, generating test cases, imagine if we infuse artificial intelligence and machine learning to potentially generate hundreds of test cases. So this would not only ensure that testing is being done continuously, but also help lower the skill gap that we often find in our uh, QA teams and in development teams as well. Does it all sound too good to be true? Well, it is true because IBM Cloud Pack for integration with API Connect can automatically generate test cases without zero code being written to get started with your testing journey. And with AI infused, the automated testing is smart enough to uh, review the test cases, the test coverage for your API implementation and identify gaps or behavior that's not being tested, and then provide you with a lot of options in terms of adding more test cases to address those gaps. We do this by analyzing the production um, open tracing data. I think you've heard me um, a lot on this, so I think it's action time, and we have our architect um, showing you, you know, walking you through a demo of what I just described. Uh, over to you. Hi, 
Okay, uh, thank you for that. Give me two seconds to sort out screen share and then I will get started. Um, oh, that's weird. I'm seeing my own screen. <laughs> what I'll do is um, I'm going to start with a couple of slides. Uh, so, so I want to uh, sort of explain the motivation uh, for what we're talking about. You know, we're looking to see how AI and automation can help accelerate and improve the quality of your API testing. Um, I want to explain how we're approaching this, uh, how it works, uh, and then, uh, as Sweater was saying, I'll show you a demo um, so you can see what it all means. So, um, just for some context, what we're talking about is testing our APIs, where under the covers, behind that API gateway, you know, when a client invokes an API, it might call uh, a microservice, which um, puts a message on a queue, which calls an integration flow. You know, there's a lot of uh, interactions happening under the covers, and, and that's the kind of stuff you want to test, because like Swetz was saying, it's not good enough to unit test your individual components. For you to have trust that you can make any changes in this environment, without causing regressions. You need to test the kinds of interactions that are caused um, when your uh, client APIs are called. What we're talking about, let me uh, skip forward. We're kind of talking about coverage in the same way that when you unit test your code, you want to know what parts of your code have been exercised. And then you use this to drive the development of new tests. You use this to know where you're missing tests and where you need to write new tests. Well, what we think is you need the same thing at the integration level um, so that you need to know where interactions between your microservices are happening. Um, so um, it's about measuring the uh, testing you're doing today and comparing that with uh, the activity that uh, could happen. So as Richard was saying, what we think is a good fit for this is open tracing. Because open tracing gives us a way of uh, instrumenting our applications, instrumenting our microservices, and capturing where something calls something calls something, where an API call to a gateway calls a microservice, calls a backend system, calls some integration flow. That sequence of, of interactions that is caused by an individual call to an API, that's that set of behaviors that we want to make sure we have a test for. Um, so, what we're talking about is instrumenting uh, your environment, um, using that to, to identify the interactions that happen. And doing this, you know, if you do this in your test environment, so you have all of your, your, the, your test environment with your test services, and you, you run all of the tests in your test suite, then that will cause a set of interactions. And like I said, using open tracing as a way of instrumenting that, you'll identify each of those interactions. That gives you a coverage that identifies what interactions between the different uh, services and uh, servers and, and API providers that you have. It identifies which of those interactions are happening when you run all your tests. If you do that same thing in your production environment, you instrument your production uh, environment, you capture those traces that identify the behavior, something or something or something. What we're talking about is comparing the two. Um, that's how we. Uh, can do the equivalent of that sort of test coverage at, in the unit test world, but at the microservices level. And this, uh, and identifying where there are um, untested behaviors. So what I mean is where we've seen an interaction in productions, we saw in your production environment, something called something called something called something. And that unique sequence of behaviors was never recreated by any of the tests in your test suite. Well, when we can find that, then we've identified an opportunity for a new test. And this is really prone to automation because we know the behavior that caused, uh, we know the initial API call that caused that behavior. So we have a starting point to automatically generate a new test, a new test that is based on real world uh, activity and behaviors. Um, so that is enough slides, I think. Um, let me show you what I mean. So what I've got here is an instance of API Manager. And I have, uh, this is a really quick, simple demo, right? So what I've created is a single API um, for a, a sort of a fictional bookshop. Uh, and what this API has is um, a few APIs to do sort of uh, CRUD tasks in a bookshop. So what I mean by that is creating and updating and deleting books, creating and updating and deleting customers, 
and then creating, updating, and deleting orders or for books that customers make. Um, just the idea is a few different types of resources that have some relationships between them. So there's just enough complexity in here um, for us to sort of show uh, some of the benefits of automation. Um, and what we've got here are two environments, as I was showing you in the slides earlier. I've got a test environment that um, I've run my admittedly very small test suite or a set of tests through. And I've got a production environment where um, we've sort of simulated real world ish uh, traffic going through that bookshop API. So what I want to do is I want to use automation to compare the my tests with what is happening in my production system to help guide me to generate new tests to improve my test coverage. So um, now why is this good? Let me sort of contrast it first with um, what it's like to create a test manually. So um, with as with a lot of sort of test automation uh, tools, what you would normally have to ask your developer to do is use their knowledge of the APIs that need testing to manually craft a test. They would have to uh, specify what API should be called. So, you know, here I can sort of say, well, I want to test that when I create a, uh, a customer, that that works. So, you know, I give it the URL for my test system, um, bookshop API customers, I uh, give it a variable, um, and then I create some assertions for what do I expect in the response, uh, and then maybe I, I make a add a get call and do some assertions to make sure that I can fetch the customer I just created. You know, it will take me 10, 15 minutes to write a single test for a single set of interactions. Um, and the sort of feedback of what we hear from the customers we work with is that that is a typical sort of activity. You know, the developers are spending many, many hours crafting these tests. And worse than that, once they get going and they start to build up the test suite with dozens, if not hundreds of tests, it's really hard for them to know what's missing. You know, what, what sequence of interactions, what unique behaviors aren't uh, being covered by any of their tests? So how do they know what test to write next? So that's, like I say, where we think an automated analysis of telemetry from your test and production systems can help uh, really accelerate this process. So what I've got here is a test suite that has been set up um, using that kind of automated telemetry I was talking about before. Um, so if I click on this uh, button here, which says insights, um, what I get here is uh, it, these are the API calls that have been seen in production that um, have a, had a sequence of interactions caused by that API call that were never observed in as a result of any of our tests. Um, so if I, I mean, I'll start with the top one. If I sort of click on view detail, you can see that open tracing trace that I was talking about. So it's not just about looking at the fact that a post call was made to slash books. It was about knowing that unique sequence of behaviors because maybe I do have some tests that call put a post to slash books, but that didn't result in this unique set of, of interactions between some of the different microservices that I have. So it's that unique set of micro, uh, interactions between microservices that I want to be able to recreate in my test. So uh, all I need to do is click on add test case, and it will, uh, I just give my test case a name, um, automated test, um, and it will look through some of the, um, my analytics from my um, production system and find an example of an API call that caused that sequence of interactions to happen. Um, so now all I need to do is just check that I'm happy with it. You know, maybe I want to extend it, maybe I want to enhance it. But as you can see, whereas before I was starting from a blank page and had to do everything from scratch, what I have here is a complete test, um, including the initial setup, but also any of the teardown that's needed at the end to clean up any of the test uh, resources that were created. So. Uh, hopefully, I can look at this, check that I'm happy with it, and if I am, I can sort of save that and add it to my test suite. Um, oh, no, I do need to finish some stuff off. Um, but the point is, instead of starting from scratch, um, I had a massive head start, and a, a head start that's informed by um, real-world behavior. Uh, but more importantly, instead of having to decide for myself what test I needed next, that was informed by data. It was informed by identifying um, what is happening in my uh, production environment and and that list of insights i was um, showing you is sorted by how frequently 
um, those interactions were observed. So what I mean by that is the ones that are at the top of those lists, those are the, the sequence of interactions that are happening most often. So that's where just a single test can capture a, a large number of, um, of real world behaviors and make sure that they're covered by tests. So that was uh, what I wanted to share. Um, did you have any slides you wanted to go through to finish up, Sweater, or sh shall I finish off? Uh, I think you're on mute. Oh, yeah, sorry. Um, I'm good. Uh, okay. Let me, um, in that case, I will just finish up with this slide. One moment. So we've mentioned how AI and automation can help. And what we're talking about is um, making your developers more productive. What we're talking about is trying to get to this idea of uh, what we have been describing a closed loop workflow. Um, so what I mean is, um, as I was sort of showing you in that quick demo, um, observing the coverage, and by that I mean observing the interactions that were caused um, from the tests that you already have, observing those interactions, that coverage of, of behavior and activity that it happens in the real world in your production system, comparing them to identify real world behavior that isn't recreated by your tests, using that to help you generate new tests. And then when you add that to your test suite, you can rerun the tests and then that analysis can happen again. And then you again sort of compare, well now with my new larger test suite, what am I missing? And you can keep going around that loop until you really drive that coverage to a point where you know, you're happy that all of your real world uh, behaviors are being recreated by your tests and you know that doesn't have to be a one-off thing you can keep doing that analysis in the background regularly so that as new things start to happen in your production environment new sequences new services being introduced you're continually able to refine your test suite to, to reflect um, what's currently happening in your APIs so that was what we wanted to share um and we have got some time left so if anyone's got any questions it would be uh we'd love to uh to take them okay I think uh, the presentation was really good, like people didn't have any questions. Maybe give, it, give them a minute or two, and if, if nobody has any questions, I think we're good to wrap up the session. Cool. So it's, it's probably worth us recapping. So we've talked about, and I'm sure that you know all of you on uh, here are, are fully aware of the importance of testing and the importance of testing your APIs, and not just in one way, but in a breadth of ways, everything covering unit integration system uh, and so on. Um, and what we really wanted to show you was um, the role that we see AI and automation playing in, in helping us to to achieve the sort of test coverage that we all really want to get to, but often find it very difficult to do when it's purely our developers doing it manually. Um, and what we showed you is one demo of what the kind of thing we're working on and the kind of tooling that, that we're trying to uh, create to enable developers to accelerate both identifying where tests are needed and creating those tests um, to make your developers as efficient as possible. Um, and if you do think of any other questions after today, please do sort of reach out to us. We'd be happy to, to talk about any of this in more detail uh, further. All right. Thank you so much uh, for attending our session. I hope you all found it useful, thought-provoking, and as Teal said, do reach out to us if you have any questions on API testing or if you would like to further this conversation. We would be happy to do that. Um, thank you all so much. Thank you.